You're watching Catalyst, Season 4, Episode 15. Stay tuned for more shows. My name is Courtney and welcome back to another episode of Artlist. Today I'm here with Jack. So um, what kind of art do you do, Jack? So I do music things. I occasionally make really bad mashups and I occasionally do live mixing. Is there kind of like a certain type of music that you usually mix? Usually electro and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of like pop songs over electro songs. I've done some like rap over electronic and that kind of thing. And I just mm -hmm. whatever. Like if I'm singing a song and I'm like, oh that's the same key as that other song and I'll waste two hours and combine them and that usually works out okay. So when did you start um, mixing your music? I started messing around with GarageBand in like seventh grade and I spent I spent like <laughs> Garage two Band weeks, is classic. I spent like two <laughs> weeks messing around with the Daft Punk track and like trying to get it to sound cool. It's like complete garbage and I still have like all the files on my iPod so I can like revisit my whole shame. But it's it was absolutely terrible but it was it was a fun kind of first mm -hmm. step and I still like I don't know. I've always liked kind of messing with things when I figure out how they work, so music's fun like that. Okay, um, and is there anything that kind of inspires you when you're mixing the music? Every so I've been to a couple I've been to clubs and stuff, and every time I see the DJs like playing music and they like read the crowd right and they like kind of play what needs what like what should be played in the crowd goes nuts. Like that mm -hmm. energy like right when everyone starts dancing is like every time I hear that all I want to do is when be the up beat like, drops. Yeah. All I want to do is like, be up there. Ah. Okay. Like every time that happens I just like that's I wanna be up on that stage. Like Yeah making the fat beats drunk. Okay, and so I hear that you have a radio show. I do have a radio show. Do you want to tell us about that? So me and Raven Jurgensen do this radio show called Drop the Bass. Drop the Bass. Our theme is we have a fish with headphones. It's very oh, powerful. Oh, nice. <laughs> and um, we play electro music and electronic music and like electro funk and like hip hop and all kinds of stuff. And typically like we, I find like, I find a lot of new music. Mm -hmm. I found I think a thousand songs since like December. A thousand songs. How do you have time to go through all that music? I go through it really fast. Like I'll typically listen to a song like three or four times in a week, and then I just won't listen to it for a while. Like okay. I, have, I have hundreds of hundreds of like amazing songs that I never find because they're just like in my library somewhere. Yeah. But I go through music really fast, so the show is kind of my way to like share that with people. So I'll find like twenty new songs in a week, and I'll mm -hmm. take the eight or nine I like the most, and then I'll put them in this playlist and I'll share them. They're almost always like brand new songs, like fresh off SoundCloud from some new artist or something. Okay, do you ever share your own music on your radio show? I've been pressured by Raven into doing that <laughs> a couple of times. Uh -huh. It's worked out okay. I don't know. I'm very I'm very critical of my own stuff, so I typically okay. I, every time I go back and listen to it after a couple months, I'm like, this is garbage. This is garbage. Yeah. Well, you're always evolving, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's check out Jack's art. Don't just wear green this St. Patrick's Day. Show some Irish spirit at Hermosa Beach's parade. 
There will be bagpipers, marching bands, cars decked out in green, and festive pups from the Irish Setters Club. Alright, my name is Earl Park. I'm part of the Occidental College Boxing Club. And today I'll be teaching y'all how to throw the jab and how to throw the straight. Now, the jab is one of the most important parts of the box. It's the range. The temporary halt on Sri Racha has been lifted, and its new facility is now offering free factory tours. Stop by soon before another tragic Sri Racha embargo occurs. Come on, Brad, what you working on? Oh, uh, just some stuff for the show, you know. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, just working on some new ideas, you know, sipping on some of that little protein. Little protein? Speak of the devil. Wow. <laughs> Here it comes, yeah. What's all this? These are these are my supplements. These are all the these are all my little sups. I have a lot more at That's home. That's a lot of sups. So this is my yes, my regimen. I do it at uh, 11.30 every day. Oh, what do you got going on here? What's the uh, Well, I got a little whey, which of course is yeah, good. Yeah. It's um a whey. Gotta get your protein in there, and then um, there ain't no other way. You know? There ain't no other way. That's my that's my that's, that's, my, that's my it is my motto. It says on my Facebook. Yeah, I'm on a pretty strict uh, supplement regi regimen right now. Yeah, what uh what do you got going for you? What are you up to? Um, I'm on all sorts of things right now. I'm uh I got I still got my whey, got my creatine, and I got this bad boy right here. What's this? Um, that's lemonade. What's that do? Um, it makes my water taste like lemonade. Oh, that sounds good. It does, and then I, I mix it with a mild pesticide. Why? Um, it uh, gets all the bugs out of your body. Bugs? Yeah, people people don't realize it. you have a lot of bugs in your body. What type of bugs are you talking about? Gnats, mosquitoes, beetles. Gross! I should yeah. get on that pesticide game. Is that, too, is that that's not really enough? That's yeah. not enough. You gotta get some more. Of that. It's beach season coming up here. It's you beach season. Up. You gotta get that body. Are you what kind of stuff are you taking now? Well, I'm doing this cleanse right now. Uh huh. It's a strict goat blood and goat milk cleanse. Okay, so you do, do you mix them or do you do, you do it separately? Oh, I like to vary it up. You know. Yeah, like do do some it's blood, just like blood, any, blood for like, breakfast, and then like the yeah. milk for lunch, and then you mix them in. It's really just you. like any goat liquid. I got you. Where do you get where do you get the goat blood from? Goats. Okay, that's what I figured. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a good place to get it. Um, it's a great place to get it. It's the best. Yeah. Uh, it still looks a little up, but um, good. yeah, yeah. I'm on all sorts of things right now. I, I eat a lot of raw meat. You, meat. Are you on the raw meat? You gotta get your the straight raw. Protein. Yeah, like my, my roommate said, it's kind of an issue for him, but like he's like weak, so like I can beat him in a fight. What a nerd! He's 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 a nerd, dude. You should see him. Like he's like, stop eating raw meat. It's gonna be bad for out or something. He's, like, he's a real nerd. Yeah. That's so all dumb. right. Let me just get this going. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a good shake. That's gonna be delicious. It's gonna be a good shake. I'm jealous of you. 
What's going on? What's up, Obi? How you doing? Hey, I'm going to the gym. What are you guys doing? <laughs> The gym? Oh, we're gonna to go to the gym, gym and lift some metal? You're gonna just go to the gym? Why do you go to the gym? Why do you go to the protein and There's supplements, supplements Obi. You you know? Look at that. A bait season, Obi. It's so good. It's bait season, you okay? Look stupid right She's now. She's so Obi. stupid. She looks so stupid. Look at this. Oh, 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 oh. It's so good. How good does that taste? Oh, it's awful. It's the worst. My diet's just terrible. I'm so constipated. <laughs> What better way to kick off spring break than attending the world's happiest event? Experience spiritual and social harmony with non-stop live music from great bands, yoga, mantras, dance, cuisine, and throwing dry colors on friends and foes. You're watching Catalyst, Season 4, Episode 15. Stay tuned for more shows. Hi, welcome back to The Ghost Show, everybody. Hello, hello. My name's Evan. I'm Will. And I'm Matt. I'm Ben. And the good news is we got Will back for an episode right now. Oh, so hell yeah. Enjoy. We this got some third. time off. Yeah. This is our other yeah. member of the team that you always see in the credits right now. So he's back right now. We got Ryan off screen as the uh, disembodied voice of reason in SAS. <laughs> so he's off on the side. And tonight, uh, we are going to be playing... A little bit of something you guys might be familiar with the graphic novels and the movies. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game. Yes, I love Scott Pilgrim. And sorry for uh, referencing something that brought a lot of harm to a lot of people of a certain ethnicity. Um, yes, I'm very sorry. Specifically the Pilgrim's of Time. But yeah, fun fact. Dude, I, I know like nothing about Scott Pilgrim, other, other than he's like the angsty teen, right? He's like, oh, well, he's, he's, not not a, he's actually an asshole. asshole. He's a total yeah, asshole. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. 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 But he Wait, does that. Not the one just Michael Sarah. Basic. Well, that for the movie. For okay. So for those yeah. of you who haven't seen the movie, um, yeah, Scott, or or read the the graphic novels, which I'd recommend over the movie, even though the music, the, the movie's great. Um, yeah. Scott Pilgrim is basically about this uh, twenty-two year old who ends up. Although in the, in the graphic novels, I think he's twenty-three. Um, he ends up meeting this girl named Ramona Flowers, who's from America. So he and like the rest of his friends are Canadian. They have a struggling band that they're working with, and they're trying to get off get it off the ground. And the whole subplot of that entire story is how the band gets hired out by a guy named Gideon Graves, who is one of seven evil exes that Scott must fight in order to win over Ramona. And at the same time, he ends up juggling a high school girlfriend and Nice Chow, so there's a whole subplot with that. Uh, so they ended up making a game adaptation that's loosely based off of the movie and the graphic novels that have references to both in it. So here is the introduction for it. Aw, oh, ain't that cute. The one game that's it's pixelated graphics and every but every girl in the game has short shorts for no reason. Dude, they're more like bloomers, dude. It's, yeah. This is, this is, I love this 8 bit style. Yeah. For like 16. Uh, oh yeah, I guess it is kind of more 16. No, people probably call it 8 bit. Not 11 in Alexis. Matthew Patel. Hey, it's me. <laughs> because I am Indian. And my name's Matthew. Are you pixelated? Are, are we all pixelated? Alright, here we go. 
Well, here's the game. Ubisoft presents Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, the game. There are no users. Let's try here. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah! We're in the story mode, let's do, um, the, 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 the Supreme Master, why not? Whoa. Okay, cool. So the, the gist of this game is, uh, you can select your characters and everything, but I think there's, uh, you can select between the main members of the band, so, uh, just to show you like, there's Scott, Mega Scott, Knives, um, I think Wallace Wells as yeah, well. Yeah, he's a good so I got him to, he's an expansion pack character, same with, same with Knives, but originally you get Ramona, uh, Wallace, Stephen Stills, or not Wallace, sorry, Steve, yeah, Stephen, Scott, Ramona, and uh, Kim Pine, Kim Pine, those are your main characters that you get to work with. And you can choose the color that they're wearing and everything right. like that, so that's some fun stuff. Um, you know, why not? I feel like, well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go classic, I like the classic. Um, fun stuff to classic. All right. All right, let's play as uh, this guy. Stephen Stills? Right. In a yellow shirt. All right, so here we go. Yeah. So, as you can already see, it's a giant homage to Super Mario in a lot of respects in every other game. There's actually cheat codes that you can use to unlock this hidden area, which is basically just a giant sound booth area. You can listen to all the music from the game. But we're going to start with the first level. So, let's go to the Frozen Subrooms, Scott's Homeland area, and you'll get to see some of the game mechanics of it. So, alright, as it loads, this is awesome. <laughs> okay, so what's the so game? Fun. The whole thing with this is it's like a 2D side scroller beat em up, and the more people you play with, the more cool combos you can do. You can pick up each other, and you double tap on the left analog stick to run back and forth. This game is for the Xbox 360, PS3, and I believe PC. I think it came out on that now. But um, it's a very great game. It's a lot of fun. Square and triangles to mash up on everybody, or if you double tap X, you can um, go crazy fighting people. And there's like a bunch of different combo moves that you unlock as you level up your character throughout the game. Now, with this, you know, just for the sake of time, we end up, like, I'm, we're all using characters that I've spent time in the past leveling up, so these, all these characters are maxed out on stats. Um, they can do crazy thing. L L1 is to summon people for fighting, which takes away from part of the life bar. I typically don't use that just because it's, it helps with, um, you know, being able to get health back in the last Ooh. throws of anything, so it's, uh, it's pretty useful to have that. As you can already see, I'm already up to bed. But, um, yep. Yeah, and you can, like, enemies drop coins, which you can use to spend on food and other gear later on in the game. So, here we go. Ooh, Ooh baseball bat. Beating you up. This reminds me so much of, like, The Simpsons. That Simpsons. Exactly. Yeah, Simpsons yeah, Arcadia. Like, yeah, and that's, it's that. the exact same mechanics of, like, like, Double Dragon or something. It's yeah. Crazy. So, there's, like, a lot of a lot of self-referential stuff. Holes there. <laughs> oh. oh. Get out of here. Right. Dude, Dude slide on baseball bat. I like using the down triangle oh. because like their power move, which is pretty epic. Oh whoa, that's sick. Oh yeah, dude, I'm rolling. Or up triangle. Up triangle down triangle is like the end all be all of attacks. Did that guy have a fedora? Oh, now you, now you gotta beat him up. <laughs> no fedora hipsters were harm in making this game. Or neck roots. Ah! You can do like whole combo breaker things right now. I think you can see, um, I just jumped into a hole. That's it. <laughs> you can pick up objects in the environment, you can throw them at people or use them to defend yourself, or you can pick up people even. A lot of the time, there's a bus coming, so run away from Oh them. god. Ah. So, as you can see, there's like little references to the next set of uh, bad guys that are going to be in the game. So, with the, the level structuring for this, is it's like you get through a giant beat em up side scrolling thing, and at the very end, you get a boss fight, uh, much like the Simpsons game. So in here, you can fight all these enemies, or I can like run away, like Scott would do, and go into this rainbow door up here, which what that is, is um, actually a hidden highway, which if everybody goes into there, they end up uh, getting onto this uh, information super, well, not even information super highway, it's like the uh, the special mine sub subspace highway, that's what it is, Whoa. subspace highway, where giant flying pigs are going to be, this is the route that Ramona takes through Scott's mine a lot of time, oh, and you can kind of just drop kick them and collect a bunch of money. So they do, there's like a lot of the time this kind of stuff happens, and they're gonna just keep flying through here as we get farther in, but here we go. But um, yeah, I mean, th these are kind of little shortcuts through the game where you can unlock money, you get a quick retreat from all the action that's going on in the game. And magically we're out here again, with a suitcase full of money that we can't use, but we can use it to bash random emo kids' heads in that are all identical, so Octomom's been busy out here. Um, whoa, I'm a little crazy, dude. <laughs> Matt Sterling. 
Exactly the mechanics. Okay, so this is, these are the shops I was talking about. So you can actually buy lives in here. If you go into the front, this is this is kind of like a little thing that you can do, but there's a glitch in the game where if um, you go to the video store and like say you've already leveled up your character entirely one time, you can keep lending money to your to your other characters to build up their character stats, and Ooh. that's one way of getting around the whole like leveling up system. But I mean, still have to play through the game once is like the whole thing. So once we're done curb stopping, the, this, these are the interiors of the stores. But basically, like you can go buy whatever from here. So like let's say okay, I. I, currently, I don't think I need any live, but like with these, since I already unlocked the menu, because you have late fees that you have to pay for Scott and other reference to the uh, the graphic novels. Uh, if you go down to the mystical, or if you go up to the mystical head, that's an extra life that you can buy. And say like you know, I know, I think I think it's your character, Matt. I think you need yeah. lives or something like that. I guess it doesn't really matter because it's like it only saves on a line, so it's whatever. Yeah. But you can go for it. Basically, Ooh. it's like yeah, if you buy it, you'll get other lives. To, uh, so that way, throughout the game, it's like kind of a nice little stock point, and they have to pay late fees. So I guess this is kind of pointless at this point. But like, we'll go down here. So aside from that, there are other shops you can go to and be like, okay, well, you know, say that wasn't helpful to me and I needed help. Well, let me go into this taco restaurant, this taco resort place. That's young Neil out here. But um, if you go to like, Tex-Mex, so here we go. So you can actually buy food to level up your character, so I want a fajita, because I'm feeling in a spicy salsa mood, like my last name. And you can actually end up giving yourself extra help this way. And they also have other things, it's not in here right now, but like, because um, we have like a stat reader in the uh, bottom right, but typically if it was like a drink or like an energy, whatever, you can, so you can see it on Knives screen right now, uh, with the little E canister, Ooh. typically that'll replenish your health automatically if you have that safe. So they have like reserves you can use if you can too. So that basically covers everything for the uh, the item buying menu. Now let's get to the end of the level. We're actually almost there, so there we go. All right, so we're near the end of the level right now. It's an unmitigated disaster, Ooh. and there's a door leading to wherever. Where oh. to? Boss battle. Hey. Battle of the bands. Oh yeah. With Crash and the boys. Dude, I love these guys. Oh yeah. But first, the super sex piece. Sex piece, I'm like, whoa! Pigs! Question mark, pigs! <laughs> you know, like, playing, this on the, playing this on the early levels, it's like such a slog to try and punch these blocks because your character is ridiculously slow until you level up. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to be able to just like drop kick through these bricks. Yeah. All There's right. also a game called Drop Kick, and all it is is entirely drop kicks. That's the oh, game. yeah, that one. Kind of like these people, they got drop kicked. Mm -hmm. And died. Yeah, that game's awesome. I want to play that. Knockout party. Oh, yeah. Wallace and the new BF Snog. Whoa! Matthew Patel. Hey, what the hell am I? Kind of like Did you cover me? What the hell? <laughs> so, this is going to be kind of a wipeout because we've got like three OP characters fighting Matthew Patel. We're waiting for some demon history ships to show up randomly at some point. Probably going to be right now. Yep. Currently, I'm getting Whoa. destroyed by them. Whoever we'll just did that thing here. That was me. Awesome. Okay, so don't underestimate Steven Sills. Is he the bassist? Or is he the drummer? Oh, I got him. I got him. Hey, okay. Yeah, his head button and like a uh, head button. <laughs> wow. I was like, yeah, the boss battle. Oh, exactly. They're they're typically like a lot longer. Yeah, this goes for three players that were all OP. Yeah, but now we get to do our victory stances, and they have references to like every single game you get to do, like Kirby and Mario. You get to see it in their exits, and then they have little rating things at the very end of it, which is a lot of fun. Never be like, KO. Come on, come on. Yeah. Stephen Stills. Yeah. One. Right. Rating. So. Pacifist. <laughs> Lead the weapon. Since I was trying to do all the crazy controls. <laughs> oh, Stephen Stills. Having a good tap. And typically what happens, since we've already unlocked the entire thing, um, these aren't actually, well these are like halfway points between everything, so you get the, the, the checkpoints between the levels, but the bigger one takes you to like, the Castle Moments film set, so you can fight against the second Evil X, and they have, um, yeah, the other, yeah, Rio's place, which is going to be, you know, the big 
standoff with NB Adams and everybody else oh, that are familiar yeah. with the comics. And as you go through, the fifth one is interesting because it's, um, they combine the boss fights so you get to fight the Katsunagi twins. Oh, yeah, those are um, cool. As a single unit. And they actually do a pretty good job of that at the long level. Uh, the part you get to fight off against Nega Scott, and then the seventh bit is against Gideon Graves. So, that is the entire universe. But, um, yeah, it, we highly recommend it. You check out this game because the levels get more than the same as you go through. Uh, very simple game mechanics, and it's just next to jump, and then it's, the replayability value is a lot of fun. really high. Welcome back to The Weekly Show, everyone. I'm Shannon O'Hara, reporting your news for this week. Last week, Representative John Dingell, also known as the Babe Ruth of legislators, announced his retirement, serving as the longest lawmaker in congressional history. He started his career at the ripe age of 29, just after the birth of Christ. This past week, U.S. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel announced the Pentagon's plans to cut the overall troop numbers to between 440,000 and 450,000 to reduce the military benefits and to eliminate the A-10 tank killer, but mostly because Hollywood asked to use the tank in the next Transformers movie. Governor Jan Brewer from Arizona has has to decide this next week whether or not she will sign into law legislation that will allow business owners to deny service to gay and lesbian customers by asserting their religious beliefs. This could potentially result in a boycott, harm the economy of Arizona and tourism, with the exception of Phoenix's new hottest gay club, the Grand Canyon, where business is expected to soar. El Chapo Guzman, Mexico's most wanted drug lord, was finally captured on Saturday the 22nd, after more than a dozen years on the run. They captured him in Culuacan, just north of his home base of his very successful drug cartel in Sinaloa, and now is held in the basement of a Mexican prison with 24-7 surveillance. Despite his incarceration, he is working on signing the rights to his life's memoir for his new Bravo show, Keeping Up with El Chapo. That's it, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. That was short. Short. I normally do four. Did I just talk really fast? Catalyst is brought to you by with special thanks to 